Welcome to the Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcast with psychologist Dr. Doreen Downing. Listen in as Doreen interviews people who felt they didn't have a voice or who suffered extreme speaking anxiety. You'll hear stories about how they struggled to speak up, what they did to find their authentic voice, and the confidence they now feel to speak up and make an impact. If you want to get started right away to find your voice, download Doreen's free 7-Step Guide to Fearless Speaking at Doreen7Steps.com. And now, here is Doreen. Hi, this is Dr. Doreen Downing. I'm host of the Find Your Voice, Change Your Life podcast. And I get to interview people who have stories, life stories about what it was like not having a voice and realizing that there's something about not having a voice. Hopefully, at some point, they get to wake up and say, I want more. I want more out of life, and it's going to take me having a voice. So how do I get it? And we get to hear their journey about how they found their voice. And I'm going to be introducing you today to Erin Bog. Is that how you say your name, Bogdan? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Hi, Erin. <laughs> Hi, thank you so much for having me, Dr. Doreen. I'm so excited to be here. Well, I'm excited because what happens here is that you're brand new to me. And it's like, we've just met on the playground. And here we are going to have a conversation and get to know each other at the same time our listeners get to hear you unfold your story. So but before we dive in, can I read a bio you sent me, which I think really frames you nicely? <laughs> Absolutely. Erin Bogdan is an authenticity and confidence coach and soul purpose activator who coaches oh, unfulfilled, ambitious, high achievers and people pleasers to ditch their self-doubt and not enough mindset and become their most confident capable, unstoppable, and unapologetic, authentic self so that they can create an aligned and purpose-driven life. Ooh, that already gets me uh, saying yes, yes, yes to you. There's a little bit more though. Today, she is free to be herself and her very journey of transformation was the exact training she needed to facilitate the same deep, profound, and tangible shifts in her clients. Erin's passion and enthusiasm for serving bad asses at heart to waking up to their infinite potential is her soul's calling, and she is extremely grateful to be living her purpose daily. And here we are living your purpose, Erin, daily, right here, right now in this moment. Again, that was a wonderful bio you sent me because I think it really captures your spirit. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I can't wait to dive in. Well, what I, you, you told me earlier, you're, you're from New Jersey, so I guess that's where you were born, but I always like to dive a little deeper back into life. I'm a psychologist and a lot of times people say, oh, you know, that was the past and now is now and let's move forward, mm. which, is, which is, you know, a good, good motto, but uh, just because I'm so curious, like how, where were you born and what was your family like and how, how some of those early experiences gave you a sense that you had or didn't have a voice? Yeah. And, you know, I love that you started the introduction saying that about how, um, although our past is our past, it definitely shaped the person that we have become. And I would say that I was a little bit of sleepwalking. I didn't realize, you know, I've been, I guess the, the journey I'll, I'll talk through a little bit happened about five years ago, more profoundly for me. But up until that point, I was kind of asleep, meaning I had really no awareness to the fact that what was being presented to me in my life was just a mirror of my subconscious beliefs. And those subconscious beliefs were formed at a very, very, very early age. So before I get into that, I'll share a little bit about my, my family upbringing, you know, from the honest, like, you know, ha hand over, you know, I don't know, hand over, I'm not a very religious person, but hand over Bible, maybe. <laughs> um, I thought that I had the perfect childhood, truthfully, you know, I really thought that 
I had two parents that loved me and they do love me. Um, but I wasn't aware of the emotional codependent dysfunctionality that I was raised in. And uh, yes, I'm born and raised in New Jersey. My mom is half Italian. So, you know, we, we, we had that culture within us of everything's got to be perfect on the outside. It needs to look neat and tidy and nice. And we need to care about what people are going to think about us. And um, my father, you know, both of my, both my, my, on my mom's side, there was addiction present on my dad's side. My, um, grandfather that I never met really wasn't emotionally available and wasn't really a good father to him. So, you know, they're doing the best that they can do given what they have. And I slowly started to come to terms with that on many levels, my emotional needs were not met. Um, and just a little bit more around that, my dad was very angry. I remember, remember him being like the disciplinary authoritative figure, very explosive and, and angry. Um, and my mom was just kind of that people pleaser, passive aggressive, do what you're told, shut up, don't, you know, just fit in, be good. And that's it. And I was the oldest child of me and my sister. And I just learned to play the role of being the good girl. The way that I got attention, love, validation, approval was through playing that role of being the perfectionist, the good girl, the high achiever. And, you know, that's kind of the baseline of where we can begin. Oh, wonderful. I mean, well, <laughs> I like I like the story that you're telling, the picture that you're painting. And one of the things already I'm getting that I think listeners will say is that, oh, you know, you could look back and say, I came from a pretty intact family. They stayed together and it was, uh, you know, I felt loved. But when you uh, actually start exploring and uh, and what you said about the beliefs, the beliefs that perhaps were instilled early on. And also I get the modeling, you know, like an angry father and a passive mother that, well, who am I really? You know, you had two, <laughs> two choices there to model yourself after. And, you know, I imagine uh, we all become somewhat of an integration perhaps, but thank you. That uh, again, the message I got so far is, there's probably more to our early life story than um, we first thought. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I can allow, there's something present I can share a little bit more around, around the voice piece. Is that something you want me to talk about now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so I really didn't have the awareness, honestly, that I didn't have a voice, um, but I didn't have a voice. And what I mean by that is that I had, I had learned that in order to receive love, validation, approval, just do what I'm told, do what you're told, fit into the box, shrink yourself, you know, do X, Y, Z and get this result. And, um, what I, I felt like I was never really seen for the true essence of who I really was. And I felt like the best way for me to kind of fit in and fit that moment was to people please and fast forward in my life um you know out of many uh dysfunctional codependent families is born addiction and so it's no surprise that my sister struggled with addiction for probably 10 years of her life and that was very uh chaotic because that even surprised my voice even more because I was like, well, there's so much chaos going on with her. I really need to be good. I really need to, you know, just do what I'm told to, you know, have only be seen, don't be heard. Um, and so I just kind of fit in, you know, fit into that little box pretty nicely. Um, and then when it came to the first awakening for me was actually in 2012 when I found the rooms of Al-Anon, which is for family members of alcoholics. And I realized that, oh my God, I have been um, not disconnected from my own needs. And I've been so worried about taking care of everyone else. I've been so worried about who do I need to be? How do I need to show up? You know, be the chameleon to flex and adapt to just fit in. And I had shut off from who is Aaron? What does Aaron really want? What does Aaron really like? You know, and a part of that shutting off was also losing my voice 
in, in the process because it's like, well, anytime there was an inner desire that would bubble up, would kind of bubble up and then stop at the throat and then be shoved back down. Um, and so that's a little bit more into the dynamic of my family and how that impacted also the suppression of my true authentic voice. Mm. I I heard what you said and this stood out to me shrink you, sh you, know, you we shrink ourselves in order to fit into a box in order to get approval yes yes and um you know I guess fast forward on that path um you know then so I was an al on for a good probably five, seven years. Um, and it was really this journey of coming home to Aaron. What does Aaron want? What does Aaron need? What, what are my boundaries? All the while, actually, I also, you know, slowly was reintegrating my voice because uh, ironically enough, my corporate background was in human resources. And majority of my experience was in recruiting where I had to be out on campus speaking. Uh, I was doing trainings. I then moved into a corporate training role. So I started also like I was also kind of being pushed into, you know, reintegrating my voice and um, using using my voice. Um, and when I was doing this, you know, personal journey with with Alna and I actually also through traveling to Maryland from New Jersey with recruiting was listening oddly enough to a podcast and um, that podcast episode I listened to the person being interviewed was the individual that he ended up hosting a uh, 12 day retreat in Bali and that's when I basically I did this immersive experience in Bali and that's when I really was like holy shit you know <laughs> the version of me that I've been living as at that time I was 28 you know, Aaron up until this point was the mirage of what everyone wanted Aaron to be. Aaron didn't really know who she was. And that's when I really, really found my voice to be like, you cannot put baby in the corner anymore. I am here. I am speaking. I am loud. And since then, it's been a snowball of that is now my purpose of sh sharing my voice, you know, getting on camera, which is highly uncomfortable in the beginning for me, even though I was a trainer, when it comes to talking about you, it's uncomfortable, <laughs> right? I'm on YouTube, all these different platforms of using my voice. And I feel in my heart, my mission is to be a speaker. Um, so it's like that journey of not having a voice now owning my voice is also a part of my journey to inspire others like me that need to really own their authentic truths. Oh, owning your authentic truths. We'll go into that a little bit more, but I just also want to get back to this whole idea, this Al-Anon experience that was such a, a transformational journey for you. And it's not something you just go to one meeting and say, wake up, but it does feel like there was a lot of learning. And I used to do retreats in Hawaii. It was a, called Speaking Quest, Journey to Your Authentic Self. And it sounds similar. And what happens for people in transformational retreats like that, I know is that they grow. And then going back, going back to a pot or the box, as you described, it, it's too small for who they have become. And so what was that like going back to life initially after you had done that retreat? I love that you asked that question because that's so spot on. Yeah, you're like stretching so big. You're stretching beyond, you know, what you thought in your mind was possible of the person that you are like really you know I had many moments of really fully standing in my power understanding I'm not this you know version of me that I've been playing as small um and to put it best it's uncomfortable <laughs> you know it's a little uncomfortable because you're like oh you know what it's a reality check of your you know when you're when so at that time it was 2017 that I went back to I actually was stayed in my corporate job for another year and a half about um I did have a five or six month maternity leave so that helped a little bit <laughs> um but what it was it was like you're kind of you know you're coming the key with transformation, it's all about your awareness. So it's like, now I'm just aware, you know, now I'm aware that I wasn't, now that I'm not asleep, I'm aware that I was asleep. And now I'm like looking around at the life that I created for myself based on the version of me that I thought that I needed to be like, that was really eye opening. And you're like, what am I doing? Right. But there was a really big balance between not 
I knew in that moment that I was meant for more. And I kept, I remember saying this to my coworker actually, because she was like, what's next? And I was like, for once in my life, I felt like I'm being guided. Like, I don't need to force anything. Whatever is coming next is going to come next in whatever order it needs to come next. And then I really felt that in my heart, like I didn't feel like I needed to go out and apply for jobs and search and seek and figure and figure it all out. I just was comfortable knowing that I'm not the same person. And as a result, things are going to start to shift. And ironically enough, how I ended up leaving my corporate job was they very corporate, like were rolling four jobs into one and wanted to give it to the new mom, me, (laughs) that was like fresh back from maternity leave. And I said to my manager, I don't want this. Like, again, good thing I wasn't the people pleaser to just suck it up and be in my anxiety and my overwhelm and, um, you know, the self doubt and the not confidence. I had the power at that point to say, I don't want to be doing this. What are my options? You know, and she gave me three options. Two of them weren't really options. And the last options, it was like, well, if you're open to it, we'll give you a severance package. And I, for the first time was like, wow, you know, um, and that was, that took a lot of courage to then say, well, I have this safety net of this secure job. And I, and I was the primary provider in our household to be like, well, I'm just going to take the leap of faith and go out on my own. But it was like everything. It was saying yes to what was unfolding in my life and, and uh, taking that leap, believing in myself. And now the rest has been history. Cause that was 2019. So three years ago, four years ago. Wonderful. I, I liked what I heard about trust when you said uh, you knew that you were different and there was a breakthrough that you had at the retreat, you had expanded and you had, I guess it's a wake up (laughs) call, but you didn't have to go do anything except for trust that the change was in process for you. And I think that that word is really important for people is, is that, uh, you know, that by living in the life that you imagine or that you want or the who you are, it feels like then life opens up, but you have to trust. You have to really trust that what you found is true. So that that makes me want to go back to what you said earlier about truths inside. <laughs> Say more about what you what you've come to realize about the truth inside. Yeah, the, the, um, so uh, to caveat that a little bit is, um, I didn't realize before that retreat, I realized it afterwards that I had this voice inside my head that was very prominent that just told me all the ways that I wasn't enough, all the ways that I'm going to be a failure. I'm not capable. You can't be a good mom. Like all these stories that, you know what it was, the inner critic that my parents were supportive, but I realize that now, even in our interactions is they're very critical, you know, like they'll never affirm or acknowledge something first. They always give the criticism first. And so I just inherited, I took their voice and inherited it as my own and made it even stronger with the desire to beat the whip, to then do more, be better, be successful. You know, I think it was like a, a motivational thing that literally was just harmful you know. <laughs> at the end. It's like, that was what I had subscribed to be true before. And what I realized is the voice inside my head isn't true. That's one possibility, but the other possibility is what is the authentic truth. And that's the journey of getting in touch of what's your authentic truth. But for most people and me, myself included, our authentic truth is we are already whole, perfect, and complete. We are already enough. We are strong. We are capable. We are, um, you know, powerful. We, we are one, you know, one with whoever, you know, for me, it's God, but it could be your higher, whoever you choose to call your higher power. Um, but that sense of oneness is what is, um, you know, the truth of I am already worthy exactly as I am. There's nothing that I have to do to make myself worthy of anything. My birthright is that I'm deserving. I'm, you know, and the other big integration piece for me was needing to give myself permission to have fun, to experience life, to have joy and pleasure and play, because that was also something that wasn't a truth of like, you have to always be busy. You have to, you know, you have to be responsible. You have to, 
get things done. You have to go out and do. Um, so there was a lot of unraveling of my, what I thought was true to get in touch with what was really true and is really true. Well, that's very profound. Look, but it takes awareness, as you said before, to examine what you are saying to yourself. What are those voices? And uh, all the ones you listed seem to be pretty negative. <laughs> and uh, but to realize that there's another voice inside, which is truth. And I, I loved hearing the, the difference is learning to know the difference, to feel the difference, to experience it and what comes from. I think some of what you've just said is the joy. You know, I can just see you as you're smiling here and talking. It just feels like you light up when you talk about, oh, everything is inside of us. We're whole. You know, it just feels like, you, you know, you want to get out with a big banner and, and tell the world. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that's honestly, that it, <laughs> you know, when I did my very first podcast, I was like, oh my God, I got to do more of these because I love talking about this. Right. And that's where it was also the realization that because we can get really caught up and I, for myself was, you know, had done this in the past. It's easy to get caught up in like being the victim and being like, why me? Why did this happen to me? Why was this my life? Why was this my childhood? Right. But it was the exact preparation that I needed of not having a voice to now be able to go through the process of owning my voice. And, you know, I thought that I was alone on that journey, meaning it surprised, it, it really does surprise me when I meet people that were just like me. And I'm like, wow, I get to help you now. I get to serve you now. I get to guide you now to have the same transformation. And that's where my joy comes from is, um, you know, every client transformation that I've worked through, it's like, I get filled with so much joy and so much gratitude and so many tears at the end, because to see where they were, to see when they came in to where they're at at the end, it's like life changing, you know, like even for me, that changed my life. Um, and so how can you not be excited about that? And how can you not be joyful about that? Yeah. What I find in my coaching is that a lot of times people yeah, they're drawn to us because we hold that vision and that possibility. Plus, we've also been down the path <laughs> of transformation. But a lot of them go, I just can't see it for myself. I can't, I don't believe it. Or I wish it could be true. But oh, you know, so a lot of them start right there, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of that first belief system, I guess it would be like a voice inside of their, their head that they're listening to how hard it's going to be. And, oh, you know, I don't really deserve to spend that much time looking at myself or I don't have enough money to pay a coach or I don't want to invest, you know, all those kinds of ways that people don't step into the transformational journey to find their voice. Yeah, I want to actually speak to that because that's really powerful is that our, um, when you start to realize that your mind is there to protect you, that's it. Like when you can come from a place of noticing these thoughts that I'm thinking aren't me, right? Like the voice inside my head is just a thought. It's not me. When you can start to observe it, you start to realize that its purpose is to keep you safe to keep you in what's comfortable. And while it was very comfortable, that wasn't truly serving my purpose, my mission, what I'm here for. If I had not had the courage to say yes in so many different ways in my life, I wouldn't be here talking to you. I mean, maybe I would like years from now, because I feel like if we're destined for something, we're destined for something, but just that I had to say yes and yes and yes and yes. I'm saying like, I don't even know, I lost count now, at least 10 plus times of me having the courage to say, I feel in my heart that I need to do this for me. You know, I, a long time ago in corporate, someone said to me, you have to be the CEO of you. No one is going to look out for you, but you, no one has your highest, best priority in mind other than you. And if you can't put yourself first, who the hell is going to put you first? 
No one. And the only way for you to serve other people fully doesn't, you don't need to be a speaker or a leader. I'm just talking in your daily life is to put the oxygen mask on you first. So when you value you, you are showing to people around you that you have self-worth, you value you, you love you, and then you can let in the love uh, and the value from other people. And so you have to transcend your fear. The fear is normal. The fear is natural. Of course, it's scary to do something, you know, scary for me. Of course, it's scary in the beginning to get on camera and talk into like no man's land. Like, yeah, if that's not comfortable. Right. But when you transcend the fear and you do it, the feeling that you have on the other side is like, I feel so alive. I feel so excited. Um, so there's always a process of transcending your fear in order to say, I'm worth it. I'm worth saying yes to me. And of course, there's an investment because it's just an energetic exchange of the transformation that's waiting for you on the other side. And if I hadn't said yes to me, I, you know, I, I'm so grateful for all the people on my journey and path that have gotten me to this place. And it all involved an investment and it all involved saying yes to me. And it all, every time was scary as fuck. And I still did it. <laughs> yes. Well, what I hear also here is that the journey and the saying yes was not only to something inside, but it was yes to the fear as opposed to no to the fear because people say, I don't wanna go there. I wanna avoid it. I don't wanna be afraid. So this is the comfort you're talking about, what the voices are saying about, you know, stay safe, stay safe. But you have to say yes to fear. Hello, fear. Let me look you in the face, fear. <laughs> and you don't scare me anymore, fear. <laughs> And to go back to trust, you have to trust that if it's aligned, you know, if the decisions align, like every decision I've made, I felt in my heart and inner knowing to know this is what's right for me. You have to trust that the universe, God is always supporting you, is always giving you the next thing that you're ready for and saying, yes, if it's aligned, that investment comes back to you tenfold. There's no investment that I've made that I've regretted that's been aligned because it's come back you know, in, I don't know, 10 times the amount of value than what I invested. And so if it's aligned, you will be supported. And that I think was also what was the encouragement for me to trust, to know, like, I need to leave this job and I need to say yes, and I need to do this. And <laughs> that's, you know, that, that was the energy that, um, of leaning into that saying yes, um, to the alignment piece too. I like that leaning in uh, analogy, you know, just that image of leaning into yes, which also means in order to take the yes, you go towards fear. And I think that's one of the, you know, being a psychologist over the years, having people come in with so many fears and helping them uh, not, not run away from fear not run away from and there was one other things I, I want to mention here to people that you uh, have alluded to and that's stage we aren't talking about necessarily being a public speaker and helping people get up and talk to hundreds of people or even you know talking to a small group it's a stage is every day every moment of your life and you're using your voice right and it's you know, calling, I don't know, the repair person. <laughs> and uh, are you really uh, going for what you need? And I know that that doesn't sound like it's toward purpose, but it's about being uh, clear about what you want, no matter what the situation is, I would say. Yeah, it's having the courage to speak up for yourself in every circumstance, every situation and setting those boundaries of what's acceptable for you. And even something as small as like the, a huge win for me um, was just even getting something that I didn't order at a restaurant and having the courage to say, this isn't what I ordered, or this isn't good, or I don't like this, or I actually asked for a salad, not fries, whatever it is. <laughs> like, you know, you are, you know, in, in that embodiment of your true essence, there's the fear of, well, people won't like me anymore. I won't be loved. I'll be rejected. But actually the other truth is that in you owning your truth, you're radiating that out and inspiring others to stand in theirs. And so my, one of my, my mentor from Bali always said too, the truth always serves everyone because it's, 
um, you know, inspire, it's coming from a place that's whatever needs to be spoken, it's spoken and it inspires the other person to rise up and meet you. Right. It reminds me of a quote by Marianne Williamson about uh, when you, I don't know, break through your fear and you're no longer afraid than other people. Uh, it sounds exactly the same thing. They, they are inspired by uh, you being who you are and fearless. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm sure people have been inspired by you today. How do they find you and give us some, some sense of how you work and where you are and how you do what you do? Yeah, so um, where you can find me, I'll start there. My last name, the uh, spelling is B-O-G-D-A-N. And all my social handles are just my name. Um, my Instagrams, it's Aaron Bogdan, but Facebook, LinkedIn, Aaron Bogdan. My website is AaronBogdan.com. How I work with people, I work with them in a six-month container and I awaken them into their badass self. And more information on that can also be found on my website. If any part of this conversation inspired you, I'd absolutely love to hear from you. I'd love to know if you're like, I'm ready for more. I'm ready uh, to say yes, or to step, step into your power, own your voice, claim your worth, all of that good stuff. You can also book a free chat with me. That's also linked on all of my social pages and my platform. I have a free guide um, there as well. And I'm doing free content all the time on YouTube and my social channels as well. So I think that's, uh, I, I, I'm everywhere, basically. I think where I, you know, where I'm working to also for myself is to like really get clear on where is my voice the most powerful and most potent and starting to, you know, dial it back a bit. But right now I'm everywhere. That may not be, that may not be the truth forever. <laughs> well, I think that, uh, you're like a jewel and you radiate out of many facets is what I'm <laughs> getting today. Thank you so much for sharing your voice and your journey and the breakthroughs. Everything you've said today, I think, is uh, full of light. And those who don't see you only can hear you. I have to say you are full of light. Look at those eyes. They're just you're bright, you're spirited and you're inspiring. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Doreen, for having me. It was such a pleasure. I really appreciate you. Thank you for being with us today for this episode of Find Your Voice, Change Your Life. Each person Doreen interviews shares what has helped them find their voice. You can learn from these guests and find your voice so you can be confident to speak up and speak out. And remember to download Doreen's free seven-step guide to fearless speaking at Doreen7steps.com. We hope you enjoyed the show and we'll return next time. Until then, goodbye for now.